Hi guys, it's Morgan, and it's the first day of the Stranger Things 2020 Readathon. And it's also the day where witches and wizards in London go back to Hogwarts. So in honor of that, the first book that I'm going to be reading is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by She Who Must Not Be Named. So it's time for me to go back to Hogwarts. Now I've read this book many times, but there's something that I just thought of that never even crossed my mind before. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I'll put a timestamp somewhere in the video and you can skip to that time. But in the first chapter, Vernon overhears wizards talking about the Potters and their son Harry, and he's wondering, is that my wife's sister's family? And he tries to convince himself that it's not because he doesn't even know if his nephew is named Harry. But when he talks to Petunia, she says that their nephew is named Harry. But since the Dursleys have no contact with the Potters, how does Petunia know that their nephew's name is Harry? I mean, she hasn't talked to Lily in a long time. So the only explanation I can think of is that Lily sent her a letter and Petunia just never responded. But I do find it weird that I never thought about that before. I just realized that I didn't say what challenge I'm reading this book for, so unless you saw my TBR video, you might not know. So I'm reading this for the challenge for Hopper, I want you to feel like this can still be your home, reread a book that feels like home, and Harry Potter has always felt like home to me, even though I no longer support the author. I just finished the chapter where they met Peeves for the first time, and it made me think about how there are parts of the books that aren't included in the movies, Peeves being one of them. They did cast someone as Peeves, but ultimately didn't put it in the movie. And I do understand that movies can't have everything that the books have, since that'll make the movie too long. But there are some things that happen in the books that I would have loved to see in the movies. It would have been interesting to see how they would have done Peeves. So, I'll see you tomorrow. I just want to say one more thing before tomorrow. So, one of the challenges that I'm doing is Nancy, which is read a nonfiction book or a mystery. So, for that, I'm reading Michelle Obama's book, Becoming, and I noticed something interesting today. So here's the book Becoming that I ordered for the readathon, but earlier today I looked over at my bookshelf and I saw that I already have the book. So somehow I forgot that. I just finished the chapter where Harry and Ron save Hermione from the troll, and I always love the ending of that chapter. <laughs> but from that moment on, Hermione Granger became their friend. There are some things you can't share without ending up liking each other, and knocking out a 12-foot mountain troll is one of them. The next thing that I'm going to say is a spoiler, so if you don't want to be spoiled, skip to the timestamp that's on the screen. But I find it really funny how Fred and George get in trouble because they make snowballs bounce on the back of Corel's turban, because behind the turban is Voldemort. So when you think about it, Fred and George are throwing snowballs at Voldemort. Something else that I wanted to talk about is something that you would only know if you read the book, but wouldn't know if you only saw the movie. In both the book and the movie, the challenges that Harry, Ron, and Hermione have to go through to get to the Sorcerer's Stone are the Devil's Snare, the Winged Keys, and the Chessboard. But in the book, there's another challenge that Harry and Hermione have to go through with potions, but that's not in the movie. But I really wish it was because it would have shown that each member of the trio is an expert on each challenge. Harry used his seeker abilities to catch the key, Ron is an expert at wizard's chess, and Hermione figured out the riddle that told her what potion that she and Harry had to drink. 
So I really wish the potion scene was in the movie, but I also understand why it wasn't since they don't want the movie to be too long. But if there's ever a Harry Potter TV show, maybe it'll be in that. I don't think there'll be one anytime soon, but maybe in the future. finished Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, so the next book I'm going to read is Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson, and this is for the challenge Max and Eleven, read a book featuring a strong female friendship. I just finished the first two chapters of Since You've Been Gone, and so far, I really like it. I also really identify with Emily because I also have a hard time talking to people that I don't really know. Compared to how I was when I was younger, I am a lot better at it, but I still can be a little shy. Well, see you tomorrow. love Emily and Frank together. I know that Emily's always nervous whenever she's around him, but I think he's a really nice guy, and I really liked how he offered to help her with the list. Since You've Been Gone yesterday, and the review for that is up on my channel, so the next book that I'm going to read is A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor by Hank Green, and this is the sequel to the book An Absolutely Remarkable Thing, and this is for the challenge Starcourt Mall, read a book you bought slash recently received. Something that I really like about this book is that we get to see from the point of views of Maya, Andy, and Miranda, since in the first book we only saw from April's point of view, except at the end when we saw a little bit from Andy's point of view. And I really like seeing what they're all thinking, and I also like seeing how they're dealing with what happened at the end of the first book. While I'm reading A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, my mom is reading An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. What do you think? <laughs> and Dobby enjoys it too. For a Beautifully Foolish Endeavor is now up on my channel, so the next book that I'm going to be reading is Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender, and this is for the challenge Lucas, read a book with a black main character or written by a black author. So I just got to the part of the book where Felix sees the pictures of himself from before his transition hanging up at the school, and even though I knew it was going to happen, it still made me upset. I mean, what does a person gain from doing something like that? Felix isn't hurting anyone, so why would someone want to hurt him? Felix Ever After is now on my channel, so the next book that I'm going to read is 
of Ice and Shadows by Audrey Colehurst, and this is the sequel to the book of Fire and Stars, and this is for the challenge Robin. Read a book featuring a female-female relationship. Ice and Shadows is now up on my channel. So the last book that I'm going to read for the readathon is Becoming by Michelle Obama. And this is for the challenge Nancy, which is to read a nonfiction book or a mystery novel. And this would be nonfiction. Also tonight, me and my mom are watching the Emmy Awards, and I really love watching award shows like that. And because of the state of the world right now, I'm curious to see how they do it. I just finished the part of the book where Michelle talks about meeting Barack Obama for the first time and it, she talks about how their friendship started and how at first she wasn't really interested in him and actually tried to set him up with someone else, which obviously didn't work, and then how she became interested in him and I just thought it was really sweet to get the backstory of their relationship. And I also think that it's interesting how during this moment in their lives, they had no idea what was going to happen in the future and that they were going to become president and first lady. So what are you reading, Dad? I'm reading Memory Man. What's that about? It's, uh, seri it's uh, the first of a series that he wrote. It's kind of gory. It's about a ex-cop, ex-detective that sustained um, a head injury in, in football and when, he's, he, when he received the injury he also got a perfect memory. Hmm. So it's like a, um, it's kind of gruesome. A lot of, so far 13 people have been killed. <laughs> so That's it's, it's kind nice. of gory. But Is it good? It, uh, it's it's interesting, and I, I want to find out who the murderer is, so it's got my interest, and that's about it. I thought it was interesting how Michelle Obama didn't want Barack Obama to go into politics, and she also didn't want him to run for president, but she ended up saying yes because she thought that he would be a great president, even though she also didn't think that he would win. And since he did win, I think he was a pretty great president. This book has a lot of pictures, but I think this one has to be my favorite. It's really sweet. I already knew about this, but I just read the part of the book where Michelle Obama talks about how her and her daughter Malia wanted to go outside to see the White House lit up in the pride flag colors after marriage equality passed. And they tried to do it without telling the Secret Service, but that didn't work out. So they ended up going outside, but out of view of the public. readathon and I finished all the books that I plan to read. I also know that this video was long so some people might not watch the whole thing which is fine so if you did watch the whole thing thanks for watching and also comment a heart emoji and let me know how your experience with the readathon was if you participated. Also, if you're a fan of the show Supernatural, my Supernatural reviews will be coming back since season 15 continues on October 8th. And I'm also planning on doing the folklore book tag since I love Taylor Swift. So if you wanna see those videos or any of my other future videos, 
Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.